Alrighty, in this video, I'm going to show you guys the new toolbar view. So basically, action bars are pretty awesome, and have been a standard UI widget in Android since version 3, and they're flexible, and they're super awesome, and you should really kind of use that, that navigation, and, and, uh, navigation paradigm when you're building Android applications. However, as of Android 5, you probably shouldn't necessarily use the action bar anymore. The reason is, is Android has released, or Google has released, a new version of the action bar. You can kind of think of it as the new version, or a more powerful version of the action bar. It does all the things the action bar does, except more. It's called the toolbar, and basically, I, I would recommend any new application you create should use it. Now, it comes in Android 5. And it also comes as part of the support library that we are, have been using, the app can patch support library. So we already have access to it in the applications that we're building, we just haven't enabled it yet. So I want to go ahead and in this video, just basically introduce you to the action bar, how you can treat an, or sorry, the toolbar, how you can treat a toolbar as if it were an action bar, and a one particularly cool feature of the toolbar that makes it worth switching to. So basically, before, before I move on, I want to point out the, just the big difference, the big difference between the action bar and the toolbar. See, the action bar is a part of the application. It's a, you can think of it as, as part of the window decor, part of the Chrome. It's like a title bar. It's always at the top. It's like a file menu. It's static. It's always there. And basically, it'll always be at the top of your application. It's assumed to be there. However, the toolbar is its own view. It's a view that you instantiate and decide where to place it. It's a view that you can place anywhere in your application's layout file, and it's a view that you can create multiple of if for whatever reason you need more than one action bar. You can now do that with the toolbar. So basically I want to show you guys how to do that. I, I want to show you guys how to it, uh, go migrate from using an action bar to using a toolbar, and how to create multiple toolbars on the same layout to achieve a particular effect. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna call, go ahead and call this application name, or that, call this toolbars, because I still can't name anything. Uh, we're gonna be using Android 4.2. I'm gonna start off with a blank activity. And a blank activity is gonna give us a activity that uses the app can pat library to provide us with an action bar. Not only that, it's also going to give us a menu that's already created, a menu resource. So the goal here is I want to show you guys how to get a toolbar set up in this application and how to effectively replace the action bar with the toolbar. See, if I were to run the application now, and I have, by the way, I have two uh, devices running right now. I have an Android 5 device and an Android 4 device running, and we're going to be testing our code with this on both of them in this video. So right now, this is what we have. We have an action bar, and the action bar has an overflow menu. And we see we have it on Android 5 and Android 4. Not terribly exciting. So how do we make this more awesome? Let's go ahead and the first order of business is going to be removing that action bar. We don't need the action bar anymore. The action bar is going to effectively now be gone. And there's a couple ways to do it. One way is to go into our styles that we talked about in the last video and come over here and add in a specific flag that'll tell it not to have the action bar displayed. I can come in here and I can say item name equals, and I can say window action bar. Now you'll be tempted to do Android colon window action bar, but remember, we're using app compat. App compat is not part of the Android SDK. Therefore, it is not going to recognize an attribute that's defined in the Android SDK because this attribute was created after, or not after, but chronologically it was created in a version after app compat targets, since app compat targets an earlier version. We have to specify it without the Android qualifier there. And we simply say false. I mean, it's couldn't really get simpler than that. So we'll go ahead and hit play. And um, I mean, you should see what we expect, which is no action bar. So that's awesome. We got rid of the action bar. There's another way to do it. 
Another way to do it would be to base our parent theme on a app compat theme that doesn't have an action bar. So let's remove that and let's change this to app compat dot light dot no action bar. I actually preferred this one for this more, even though it basically does the same thing. And the reason I prefer doing it this uh, doing it this way more, where you specify the parent theme as something that says dot no action bar, is I think it makes it a little bit more clear what our intent is, and it also re removes the fact that or gets rid of the fact that we have to put in our window action bar and set it to false. So we can go ahead and hit hit play, and we'll see the same thing: no action bar. So it's important to note that there is a light and a dark version that don't contain no action bar. Whoa, arrow shake just destroyed everything like it usually does. So anyway, there is a light and a dark version of this. So I can do app compat dot light dot no action bar, or I can just do theme app compat no action bar for the dark version. Anyway, that's how we get rid of the dark or one way that we can get rid of the action bar. And another way is through code, but we won't do it that way because that's just kind of wasteful. So let's go ahead and create a toolbar. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to open up text inside of our activity main. Now what I will do, no I won't. I'll leave, I'll leave the padding in here. You'll see why I'm leaving the padding in here, this 16 DP padding, because it'll really emphasize the fact that the toolbar is being inserted in the middle of the layout itself and not attached to the window Chrome. So let's go ahead and instantiate a toolbar. We simply do, okay, so first of all, now we could, of course, do toolbar if we wanted to, right? But this toolbar is part of the Android SDK and it only will work in Android 21 or above or Android 5 and above, API level 21 and above. So it'll only work in Lollipop. We don't want something that only works in Lollipop because for the next couple of years, if you're writing new Android applications, you should absolutely be targeting Android 4 and Android 5. So we don't want to use the native toolbar. What we're going to do instead is we're going to use the support toolbar, which is going to be android.support.v7.widget.toolbar. That is the thing that we want to instantiate. So let's go ahead and give a give it a couple attributes. First of all, I want to give it an ID because I want to reference this toolbar in code. And I'm going to call this activity main toolbar. Next up, we have to give it a width, a width and a height. So the width is going to be match parent. Seems like a logical thing to do for a toolbar that's going to stretch horizontally in our activity. And then we need a height. And for the height, I'm just going to say wrap content. So however big you want to be, you be that big. Now, in reality, that's about it. <laughs> that's all we really need to do to have our toolbar. We see it right there, right? That little guy right there. So what I'm going to do here is before I go in the code and actually make this toolbar do something, I am going to jump into my menu. So I'm going to go over here into menu. I'm going to open up menu main, and I'm going to create a new item. I'm going to say item, uh, ID. I don't want. I don't care about the ID. For the title, I'll say hey or sorry, do stuff. And then I'll do app colon show as action equals always. And those are the only two, those are basically the only two required things that I need to specify here. The title and the show's action. Of course, we're not going to put any logic for this button. I just want this button to appear so you guys can kind of get an idea of what's going on. All right, so jumping back into our main activity.java, what is my goal here? So I'm going to jump into onCreate. So this is the onCreate method. This is after the set content view. That's important. We have to be doing this after the set content view because before the set content view is invoked, there's no toolbar created. But what, what are we doing here? Well, okay, let's start off by getting a reference to our toolbar. That's that's step number one. We need a reference to our toolbar. So I'm going to say uppercase toolbar. And notice how, again, there's android.widget and there's also android support v7 widget. We need the support version. I'm going to say toolbar equals cast to toolbar, find view by ID, RID, activity, main, toolbar. So that is how we get a reference to our toolbar. Really no different than how we get a reference to any view in our view hierarchy. So that's really not that super exciting. Now that we have a reference to our toolbar, there is a new method. 
there's a new method that's introduced in Android 5 and also backported using the action bar activity class that we're subclassing. The new method is awesome because what it does is, is it takes in a reference to a toolbar and it takes whatever would have normally been in the action bar and it shoves it into that toolbar that we specify. Meaning we can instantly migrate from using our action bars to using toolbars without any change in our code or any change in how we think about how to work with action bars. So let's do that. The method is called set toolbar, or sorry, set action bar. And you'll notice there are two versions of it set action bar, which comes from Android 5, and set support action bar, which comes from the action bar activity class. This is why we need to inherit from action bar activity, which is why we need to use the, not the native action bar, but the support action bar, specifically so we get access to the set, set support action bar method. See, if we didn't, this wouldn't work properly because we wouldn't have access to the set support action bar method because it comes from the action bar activity class. So now you're kind of seeing this whole sort of thing where you might say, you know, it'd be really cool to use the native toolbar or native action bar because I'm targeting devices past Android 4, but I want to use the toolbar. But now you can't because in order to use the toolbar, you need to use the support toolbar. And in order to use the set support action bar method that takes the support toolbar, you need to inherit from action bar activity, which necessitates you use the support action bar. The point is, is that the support libraries makes everything messy. But anyway, let's go ahead and invoke support set support action bar. And what does it want? It wants a toolbar. Again, the point of this method is it's going to take everything that would have been in the action bar. and It's going to shove it into that specified toolbar. So let's go ahead and hit play. And let's go ahead and wait a couple years and check that out. So first of all, you see our title, Toolbars. Next up, you see our, our button and our overflow menu. So that's really cool. You basically see a toolbar, an infinitely more customizable thing that could be placed to the top, to the bottom, to the left, to the right, above things, underneath things. We can animate it. We can do whatever we want. And it has all the functionality of our action bar. However, this isn't what necessarily we would want at this point. I, or we might not want what this looks like right now because it looks honestly kind of ugly because it has no styling. It has no background to it or anything like that. Now, there's a couple things we could do here to fix that. For example, we could go into our, our um, activity main and we could give our whole activity a background of, um, of our color primer. So ATTR and then, oh, I always forget this guy. Color primary. So we could go ahead and do that and hit play. And this will look kind of cool. Oh, my color primary happens to be not set because I didn't set my color primary. Um, yeah, I can go ahead and set this. By the way, I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this particular example because I wanted to show you guys this question mark ATTR symbol. This is the syntax that's used to refer to a style, which means in order to access it or in order to change it, we can jump into our style.xml and I can go ahead and create a new item called color primary. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in a color from the material guideline. So let's go ahead and go with this blue here. Uh, it's going to be 19762. And let's hit play. Anyway, the point is, is, is it, it would look a little bit better with a background. Oh, that looks awful. But anyway, the point is, is if it were white, for example, it could blend in with the background and it can go under and above things. But anyway... Let's say that you wanted to apply that just to the toolbar itself, the, the adder color primary. You notice, again, I wanted to do this example, specifying the adder color primary won't change the color of the toolbar itself. We have to manually specify the color of the toolbar. So to be consistent with the action bar, I'm just gonna simply say Android background adder color primary right on the toolbar itself. So now there's some, there's some visual delineation between the toolbar 
and the rest of the app, which may or may not be desirable. Like I said, it might be cool to have the toolbar just fade in without any background at all and have it appear under uh, um, have it appear under other UI widgets as you scroll. That, for example, is completely possible to do now. Anyway, it still looks pretty ugly, and that's primarily because I'm using a dark color, but it looks as if it wants to be a light color background because it's black text, but I'm, use I'm forcing it to be a dark color text. Now, we can fix this very easily by specifying the theme. So I can come over here. I can come over here. And I'm going to go ahead and say app colon theme equals. Now, for this app, I'm going to hit alt enter. And that'll bring an XMLNS app at the top of the file. Right there. And I'm going to specify a theme here. So let's go ahead and say style theme overlay app compat. And let's say um, dark dot action bar. Now what that's going to do is that's going to style everything in this toolbar to be what an action bar would look like in a dark theme, which goes with the chosen background color that we've given our toolbar. So now you can see it's now white. It does look a little weird with that padding, but again, I'm not doing this because uh, it looks good. Uh, obviously, I'm not a graphics designer. If you haven't figured that out, then by now I don't. I don't even know. Um, but I really wanted to emphasize, though, that there is a separation here between the window Chrome and the toolbar itself. You see 16 pixels around the toolbar, indicating that's a view in the hierarchy. It's not something that's anchored to the window itself. Okay, the last thing I want to show you guys is what if you wanted another toolbar? So what if I, what if I wanted to go um, Android... I'll get rid of that. Get some more vertical screen space here. Android support v7 would get toolbar and give it an ID of a new ID of activity main toolbar2. Give it a width of match parent. Give it a height of wrap content. Give it a. Um, let's keep this guy's bar. Yeah, we can give him a different background. Uh, what do you think? Maybe purple. And then give it a app theme because that's a darkish purple. I'm going to give an app theme of that same style theme overlay dark action bar. Now what I'm going to do is on this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say align parent bottom equals true. So now you see we have two action bars. One at the top, one at the bottom, or more appropriately, two toolbars. So how do we go about manipulating the second toolbar? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We can jump into main activity, and we can say toolbar, toolbar equals toolbar, find view by ID, R ID toolbar. Now that I have a reference to it, I can go ahead and say toolbar dot, and I can invoke different methods on it. I can set the title if I wanted to do that. I can set um, all these different parameters. I can find individual views inside of it because it is a view. I can manipulate its pop-up window and so on and so on. What I can also do is I can also inflate a menu. So that's really cool. I can actually inflate a new menu onto this toolbar that's separate from the menu that I inflated for this activity, which allows me to inflate more different kinds of menus. So to do that, I'm going to say r dot menu dot menu main toolbar two, and then I'm going to hit alt enter enter to create a menu resource. Hit enter again, and now I can create a menu just like I did before. So I can say item, I can give it a title of on the bottom, and give it a app show as action equals always and now we can hit play and check this out now i have two toolbars and they both have different menus we have one at the bottom and one at the top alrighty um yeah, that's really all I wanted to cover in this video. Toolbars are pretty straightforward if you know action bars. 
So, yeah. I guess uh, a couple other things to point out. We can do stuff like get support action bar, and we can still modify the, the action bar, quote unquote, such as saying something like set title and saying, hey there, and hitting play. So this is me act after. Now, it's important that I do this after. Actually, I don't know if it would matter. I haven't tried it before. Either way, the point is, is that I can now invoke get support action bar, and it's going to return an object that represents my toolbar at the top. So that's really cool. Uh, another thing I want to point out is it's very common when you're using toolbars like this. Uh, let me go ahead and find that in my layouts. Here you are. It's very common when doing toolbars like this to break this out into its own include, and then in your base activity, have it always set the action bar as if it's that toolbar. We'll see an example of that later in this series when we start building up our action bar on our application, when we start talking about how we're going to handle navigation and all that fun stuff in the app. But, uh, but for now, as far as this quick introduction into toolbars, I think that just about wraps everything up. And uh, we'll see you again in the next video.